God, not be half cocked or just run around with their tail between their legs, but we be willing to stand up and declare that God is good no matter what the cost. Ladies, don't you dare settle for a man who doesn't love God more than you. If you got to drag him to church, ditch him now. If you're married, you can't. But if you're not married and you're, you're dating a guy that does not want God, that does not want church, that you got to beg to come to the house of the Lord, are you crazy? That's right, I made some men upset, it's all right. Because it's time for the man to start taking the spot. You see, what changed all these men was not the factor that all of a sudden someone gave them a million dollars. What changed these men was not the fact that all of a sudden they got great fame. What changed these men was they met with God. Something happened in their heart that changed them. From being just an obscure, obscure individual to be a man that God could look at and say, hmm, that's my boy right there. That's my boy right there. That's the one. Come on now. That, that's my kid. David had the experience. Well, we know Abram had the experience, or he would never have left his country. David had the experience. We find in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14, how God got a hold of his life, and he became the commander of many. Why? Because he had a heart after God. Josiah, we declare, he stood up and he tore down all the, all the satanic symbols in, the, in all of Israel. Why? Because he had a meeting with God. Peter, Jesus declared to him in John chapter 16, John chapter 20, do you love me? And he said, yes, I do, Lord, then feed my sheep. Peter stood strong. And we know Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus. It changed it. Some of you men, listen now, listen now, guys. Listen, 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 please, please hear me. I'm not asking you to be a religious freak. Some of you need a real move of God in your life. Some of you really need Jesus to touch you to the place that you can't deny that Jesus touched you. Some of you had good church experience. And as much as God moves in this house, listen now. There are people that are going to come and go out of here every single week that never feel, never get touched by Christ. Well, why is that? Because they don't want him. Man, it's time to be a man of wanting. It's time to be a man that says, you know what? I can have all the things of the world. But if I got to get rid of it, oh, what did Paul say? I count all things lost just to know Jesus. There comes a place, men, that we recognize something very powerful. You can have everything in this world, but how quickly can it go? You can have great wealth. How quickly can the wealth go? You can have great fame. How quickly can it go? You can have great health. How quickly can it go? You can have a great family. Come home and everything's gone from your house. But there's one thing that will never move. His name is Jesus. Man, we need a move of God in our lives. Amen. We need God to shake us at our quick. We need God to get right down and dirty with us and, and let us know that no matter what, dear Jesus, we're going to serve you with all of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, soul, and our strength, and we are not going to, we're not going to sell you out, God, for something stupid. Say amen or oh my. All the men got quiet in the place. Say amen. I can't hear the men shout, I'm a man. That makes me feel better. There's something, though, that is happening within the church world. Do you mind me sharing? Honestly. Something's happened in the church world. And as a pastor, kind of, I'm not sure how to handle it all the time. Back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and even parts of the 70s, the one thing that you heard was that they would preach what we call a hardline gospel. Now, I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe in obedience. We believe in salt. But in the old days, it had very little to do with walking with Jesus and had everything to do with the do's and the don'ts. And then there's been a swing, a pendulum swing. Humanity is absolutely amazing because what they do in our human mindset is we are extremists by nature. 
When we see something happen over there and we don't like it, we go the complete opposite direction to get away from that. There is something that has gone from the houses of God that needs to be resurrected, and it's this. God said, for I am holy, you should be holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Well, I'm not talking about do's and don'ts. But you see, the men of the church today, getting ready to offend you, I'll let the word do it. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. It is amazing when you look at the men of the church and the men of the world and you see them in the world and you can't tell the difference. Do I at least get one amen from a man? When the men of the church are living the same way the men of the world are. When you come to church, you can hold your cuss. But on Monday morning, baby, you can rattle off that F word, just a flying climb, my baby, come on. You intertwine that F word, and it just works at least three times in every sentence. And if you, if you, if you tried to understand, you couldn't understand. But now you don't do that, do you, David? Thank you, Jesus. You can cuss like the sailor with the boys on Monday through Saturday. But when you get to church on Sunday, you holy. Come on now, you can throw down with the boys with the booze. On Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. I wasn't given Tuesday the right to drink. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. You can throw down with the boys. Because that's what boys do. But I'm telling you, when the world can't tell the difference from the church, we got a problem. Oh, I'm talking to the men now. Because, men, you are leaders and not followers. Turn to somebody and say, I'm a leader. I had three men say, I'm a leader. And two ladies I need all the men to shout, I'm a leader. leader. They start talking about that nasty joke at at work. Baby, you right along laughing with them. In fact, you got one yourself. You saw it on the internet while you were looking at your porn. Oh, come on now. Ah, Jesus. Jesus is good, amen. Amen. Got to have a little salt and pepper. Glory to Jesus. It's time for the church to be different. When the Bible says, come out from among them, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. You're not going to live perfect, especially if you struggle with something for years. But I want you to know that God is the deliverer. Say amen. But when the world watches you, and if you don't think they're watching you, excuse me, they're watching you. Listen, the sinners tell us all about you. No, you think I'm kidding you, man. I don't believe in gossip. But sinners make it a point to tell the preacher how their people live. Yeah, you're a wife swap in church. Oh, we heard that one. Well, Pastor, uh, I had some friends who are barkeeps, and boy, your people can drink good. Oh, no, I heard that one not too many weeks ago. Oh, preacher, they can throw down. I think some of them are your leaders. Oh, Pastor. You're that preacher from his tabernacle, aren't you? Listen, now I'm telling you, uh, uh, no condemnation, but the fact is that sometimes there needs to be an awakening. Say amen or oh my. 
Oh, pastor, but I drink in private. I get drunk in private. 